We got four. They keep on coming. Again, if you guys have any comments, any questions, if there's something you'd like to share, uh, Casey is on the line. <laughs> He'll be our mediator on our comment section, and uh, we'll be able to answer any questions you might have. We also have a little bit of a surprise with our painting with the Rose Brothers. And uh, I want to see how many people we can get to do this. Alrighty, come on in, everybody. I know we're running a little late. Thank you again for bearing with us during these trialing technical difficulties. Casey, are you there? Can I get a confirmation? Are you alive? All right, we got six bodies. This is better than nothing. <laughs> Keep them coming. We'll wait till about, give or take, 7.15 to get things started. Does that work out for everybody? Oh, boy, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, thank you, Susan. Am I on the big screen? Thank you, Casey. I appreciate it. So in the future, we're hoping to do more of these. We'll get started in about two minutes. That way, those of you who have a bedtime don't have to stay up too late with us. So we'll start at 7.10. Uh, so back to what I was saying is hopefully uh, we can get more of these out for everybody. This is our very first official live feed, and we had the opportunity to get with Madame Eskew and the Grand Arbiter, two great friends of ours from our Comic-Con world, the cosplay world that we're part of as well. And uh, they asked us why we didn't do more online stuff. So we're going to give it a shot. All right, it's 710. So whoever's here, let's get this thing started. Again, thank you, everybody, for joining me. <laughs> I have butterflies. This is so much fun. Um, I, I can't believe I have butterflies, even though I'm an uh, educator and a uh, speaker at the aquarium. So welcome again, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Um, if you're just joining us, feel free to add any comments into the comments section. Um, my One of my other thirds will be helping mediate that as I will be doing what we have got you guys all excited for, and that's painting a dinosaur. So I just want to let everybody know, uh, thank you for taking your time for coming out in these trialing times. I know I've been mentioning that a few times. But it really means a lot to us. I know we're all spending a whole lot of time at home, but it's nice to get to see and get to talk to some familiar faces. Hi, Ashley. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to do is just a simple paint today for our Dino Vember, which is a fun event that Casey and I decided that we're going to take part in this month. Uh, being as Casey is an amazing illustrator, um, I'm practicing every day to get to that point, but I am the painter. So if none of you have experienced a full-blown Bros Brothers trifecta, uh, Mitch would normally engineer our stuff, Casey would draw it up, and I would finish it up by painting it. So what we're going to do today is a very simple painting of a dino for Dinovember. And if you guys are following us on Instagram... This will be tomorrow's dinosaur for Dinovember. Um, I, we will put all the information at the very end of this live feed uh, so you guys can follow us if you aren't already. If you have any questions, we have our email, we have our phone number. Uh, we even have an Etsy shop. So if you want to add some Bros Brothers, 
Productions products to your costumes, we'll get you hooked up with that. So without further ado, let's show you who we're going to be working on. And that is our friend and my most favorite dinosaur, the Parasaurolophus. Uh, so this is the illustration that Casey drew. It just makes me laugh because um, a little bit of background. Parasaurolophus is my favorite dinosaur. And it's a bit odd that it ended up that way because within the past decade or so, scientists were able to computer generate by scanning the skull of this dinosaur the sounds from the chambers that they were able to define with those scans and recreate the sounds this dinosaur makes. Uh, it basically sounds like a French horn. Uh, I can give it a shot, but I'm sure I'm going to blow out the speakers. So if you guys want to know more about that, type in Parasaurolophus sounds on YouTube, and it sounds just absolutely amazing. So with that, the dinosaur's loud. If you know me um, in person, I'm a very loud person as well. So here we have our Parasaurolophus. We have the height in meters, the length in meters, and the weight as well. It's a massive dinosaur. So a little bit of background of that. It was found here in North America, which is pretty cool. Um, up in the northern states where we often find a lot of our favorite dinosaurs. Oh, Shelby wants me to make this sound. <laughs> Ooh, I guess that's the best I can do. I don't have the resonating chambers of a Parasaurolophus. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Makes honking sounds, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can imagine this dinosaur right now making the noises I just made for you. So a little bit of that uh, history of this beautiful animal. It's massive. Uh, just imagine a giant reptilian-looking cow grazing in the fields of Thank you, Shelby. <laughs> the fields of North America well over 65 million years ago. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get us started with what it is that I do after Casey illustrates these wonderful animals, or anything for that matter, and uh, what it takes for me to do this simple drawing, paint it up, and, oh, thank you, Casey, for posting that. So if you guys want to while I'm painting and would like to listen to the Parasaurolophus sounds, Casey left it in the comments there. So I'm on Photoshop. This is the latest uh, version of Photoshop. It's CC 2021. Uh, I have a monthly subscription. It's only about 10 bucks. Uh, Photoshop is used uh, for photos, but throughout the years, I started back in 2000, I've learned to paint with it, and a lot of artists do as well. So if you're familiar with it, if you're not, feel free and leave some comments. If you have any questions on how to use it, let us know. Again, I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, I would love to help you better understand the program and allow you to use it and create these fun things as well. Um, so what I've done is I've actually used a shortcut to bring up all of the uh, tools and our panels over here on the right side. Uh, you can see on the right there, I actually have the other dinosaurs that we've painted so far. No sneak peeks. <laughs> All the dinosaurs that we've painted so far for uh, Dinovember. We have 30 altogether. We're saving certain ones for certain days, but there they are. But what I'll do is I'll create a folder for that dinosaur, so at least I know where it's at. Um, you can save these as individual files, but because I'm using similar color schemes, I like to draw them from the files I have within this file itself. So the folders you see on the right is what I'm talking about. So I've created number 22, the Parasaurolophus. Uh, don't mind the numbers. It has nothing to do to correlate with the days. Hi, Vivian. It's so good to see you joining us. <laughs> a long time no see. Uh, Vivian is a friend from high school and used to sit down and draw and paint with us in art class. So this is great to have you on board with us, Vivian. All right, so you're going to make your folder. I've labeled it so I know exactly. The uh, Ben, will you show you the program and let you play on the computer with it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good point, Susan. Uh, once this whole COVID thing uh, decides to lie its ugly head down for us, um, it would be great to have some of you over to possibly do a Photoshop tutorial. That's a whole other ball game. So Casey has left some information of Parasaurolophus down there for you guys. Um, 
and uh, let's let's get to coloring. So I have a little bit of a surprise for everybody. You are going to help us with painting this dinosaur. So this just isn't me doing it. And how we're going to do this is you're going to leave in the comments ideas for pattern, the colors, and potentially something off the wall that you guys might want to put into this thing. Like, uh, it's got a red head. I don't know. But the best part about um, paleontological recreation, so paleo art is what is it is referred to as in a lot of social media uh, deviant art websites that display artwork um, is it's pretty much 99% up to you but coming from two scientists Casey and I have decided because our parents for the longest time have always asked us why does it look like that we want to kind of encourage you guys to think about not only the creative patterns and colors these animals have, but the environment that it would have to blend in with as well. Yes, Susan, peacock colors with fuchsia on the belly. <laughs> would love that. And that's not to say we can do that tonight. So go ahead. Let's pick um, three color schemes. An obscure animal pattern has my name all over it. Of course it does, shall we? Uh, one of the other dinosaurs that we painted this month was Amargosaurus, and that is Shelby's favorite dinosaur. And we actually painted it with the color scheme of one of her favorite birds, and that is the crown crane. So real quick, crown, cane, crown cranes are found in Africa. You can see the black and white face. The red would be the, the dewlap of this bird. And then, of course, we have the crown, which is this yellow color. And it's a gray body with a light gray color belly. So we like to kind of pertain it to not only the natural habitat, but go obscure. I mean, this is a giant dinosaur here. And we're talking about a small crane with its color pattern. It is very lovely. <laughs> so, Casey, you go ahead. And what I'm going to have you do is collect those three things. We want a pattern, a color scheme, and an obscure color scheme. And then you're going to send it to me via text if that works out. And I will start pulling up colors. And we can get painting, my friends. This is exciting. I'm so happy to have you guys here. This is way too much fun. We can throw this dino up. We're going to have all the creative freedom we want. So while we're doing that, um, I will show you guys... Uh, the next step that I take to make sure that I'm coloring with inside the lines. I know we're always told as artists to paint outside the lines, which we are with the color concept and the pattern and all the sorts. But uh, what I like to do is just make sure it's a clean line. Uh, these things for you in the future could be a part of a coloring book or they could be um, pins, enamel pins that you find. So those crisp lines really help out with production companies. Uh, we have a little bit of experience with that. So if you guys want any information on like stickers and uh, let's see, printing companies, please let us know. We can get you to a few as well. So while you guys are doing that, you guys are throwing in your comments. This is great. Sapphire, blue, maroon, and gold. Ooh, yes. <laughs> A very loud dinosaur with loud colors. Susan, I saw your uh, comment there. Lives in a fern and orchid jungle. Yeah, so we could have some of those bright colors. Ooh, pattern like an ocelot. That would work. Uh, you do see some prey items with patterns that have spots. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the past couple days, but we put up Carnotaurus. And Carnotaurus comes from South America. So I went ahead and made that into a jaguar pattern. So you could see those beautiful rosettes on the dinosaur itself. It's got the gold, it's got the light underbelly, the counter shading that helps it blend in. So uh, prey items can't see it. So great, great ideas. Oh, thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I, I hope it is... Um, What's the word I'm looking for here? Contagious, the laugh, yes. Okay, so keep them coming, my friends. 
Uh, next step I'm going to take again is that selection I mentioned earlier. So here in Photoshop, there is uh, the selection tab at the top. That's not really going to do much for you because it's a lot to do with tools in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and select my layer here that has the lines because we want to paint within the dinosaur itself. But you'll notice right behind the horn and the head where the back is, and right between the right forelimb and the right hind limb, there's an open space, technically the background. So when I'm selecting, you can either subtract or add to your selection as well. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and select out here. You can see these little dotted lines. Hopefully your screen will bring them up, but they're called ants. Yeah, they're marching ants. They're just cruising along right there. Ooh, Shelby, parrotfish color. That would be great. <laughs> All right, so I've selected around the dinosaur itself. Now, if you do the magic wand and there happens to be one little nick missing in your outside line, it's going to select the inside as well. Let me go ahead and show you guys that real quick. I'm going to select my eraser tool. I'm going to go down here to the left hind limb. I'm going to make a cut right there. Go back to my wand tool and look, all of a sudden on the inside of the body of Parasaurolophus, it is selected. So if I were to paint in there, it's not going to paint under the lines. So these are things that I have to look for when Casey draws. So I have that complete outside barrier to paint inside the lines. Uh, quick tip contr or control or command, I'm using a Mac by the way, uh, will allow you to uh, go back in your history. That's what's awesome about um, Photoshop is they have a line of history. So it's basically like undo. You can see up here in the top right corner underneath my color palette, it has my history. And that's great because you can go back very far in the um, history depending on if you missed a step or you accidentally went into a layer you didn't want to. So, hi Trenton. <laughs> is he there with us as well? That would be awesome. Okay, if he's not, I hope he's here with us in spirit and good times and happiness and all that good stuff. So, all right, we're going to select the outside of the dinosaur. We're going to select those spots that we don't want color to show up in, and I'm going to inverse my selection. And if you're using a Mac, it's Command-Shift-I, boom. You'll see that those little ants on the outside that we're marching are no longer there, which is nice because I've selected Parasaurolophus itself. Now, what I've run into as well, and this might be a little tip for anybody who uses Photoshop, if I were to paint right now, a smidgen of the color is going to be right there on the edge of the drawing. And what I want to do is make sure all the color is inside the drawing. So I'm going to go up to my Select tab at the top. There's a menu that can pop out under Modify. I'm going to go to Contract, so I'm just going to bring it in a little bit by one pixel. Hit OK, bing bada boom, there we go. Now if I zoom in real quick, you'll see what I'm talking about. There is one pixel between the edge and my selection, so if I am painting, I'm not going to get this weird colored line that pops out around the edge of the dinosaur. All right, so our selection is good. Okay, so we've got that. Now Casey, have we got our color schemes that we've decided on? I've seen a lot of really good ones, everybody. This is fantastic. <laughs> the parrotfish color, all that awesome stuff. Keep them coming. All right, I'm going to grab some water real quick. Casey brought up a little blurb there about the Parasaurolophus, uh, an original hypothesis regarding the function of Parasaurolophus's horn was that it would use it as a snorkel. Yeah, this has been rejected because there were no holes in the top of the horn. A lot of paleontologists 100 plus years ago assumed that dinosaurs were water-dwelling critters for the most part because they were so massive that how could such a big animal be able to walk on land with all that weight? Uh, for the Parasaurolophus, it fed in marshes. So in order to go down and grab food and breathe at the same time, it may have had the snorkel, but of course that's greatly debunked. So thank you, Case, for giving us that little bit of dino information. Okay, so Casey has given me parrotfish colors with P. 
Peach. Are we talking Peach from Nintendo? I'm probably sure we're not. But anyway, that would be fun. A little Princess Peach crown on top of our Parasaur Lophus at the end. So what I'll do from there is now that we have our selection is I need to find those colors. So right now I have a um, layer that I've created that says body. That's just going to be the body of my color right there. So on my internet, I'm going to go ahead and find a picture of a parrotfish. This is fun because you can select colors from the images that you just copy and paste onto um, Photoshop. And we can go from there. Are we talking the same pattern too as a parrotfish? That would be fun. All right, it's just telling me that the color scheme is a little different. All right, there's our parrotfish. Beautiful, just absolutely vibrant. Oh man, this is gonna be a dinosaur not to mess with. Uh, if you think about it, and yes, dino DNA. <laughs> we have ourselves a baby dinosaur. Uh, the color schemes. Any, any animal that's brightly colored is usually warning you to leave it alone. And that is, I believe, a term called apo, aposematism. Uh, or bad, yeah, aposematism. Uh, it's brightly colored and it is basically sticking out like a sore thumb for a reason not to be preyed on, but to tell you that you should not mess with it. Uh, if you think of poison dart frogs, uh, those are definitely an animal that has that type of color pattern. Uh, let's see, Gila monsters here in Arizona have that bright orange color. That is to warn predators, don't come near me. So because our Parasaurolophus is so massive, it's a herbivore, uh, we could definitely make it brightly colored because some researchers, some scientists believe that the horn with the noise that it can make a herd of these dinosaurs coming together, if they feel threatened, <laughs> yeah, nice comment there, Susan. <laughs> I know, we, we should definitely have bright colors on us. Uh, that if a herd of these dinosaurs came together, they could all produce that loud, resonating sound. It could basically scramble the, the brains of a dinosaur, not physically, but definitely confuse a predator like the T-Rex, which they believe fed on Parasaurolophus, so pretty awesome. Uh, this dinosaur is looking for love. Oh yeah, that too. So even the colors could change um, over time with this dinosaur during the mating season. So a lot of research has gone into that. We've actually been able to find out through modern technology uh, some colors of certain animals in our prehistoric world, including animals that weren't dinosaurs, like the Mosasaurus, uh, the Archelon, uh, which are both aquatic or marine reptiles of the Cretaceous, uh, just by looking at the fossil remains and how they were fossilized. That pigmentation was able to somehow uh, leave an imprint that we could determine that countershading, a dark back to the animal, so dorsal side, versus a light ventral side, which is the underbelly. You'll see a lot of dinosaurs painted like that. I'm a fan of Line Before Time. Casey and I and Mitch grew up on it, and uh, that's something that we like to always reference, and you'll see a lot in dinosaur paintings. So Casey has left us. Parasaurolophus is one of the better known dinosaurs in the fossil record. Yes, because there are a ton of fossils that have been found about these dinosaurs. So let's get to painting, guys. Let's make this dinosaur look nice and vibrant. You can read more about Parasaurolophus, but let's get to painting. So we're going to do a little bit of the peach color. I'm going to go ahead and for the body color, what happened is when I pasted, the image went onto my body layer there. So we're going to just change that to um, parrotfish. Then we're going to change this one to Body color. All right. Okay, so here's a quick little trick you can do with uh, Photoshop. If you look on the far left here, you have your paint swatches. I have that pink that I selected, that peach color, and that's my foreground, and my white is the background. I'm going to flip that. Uh, on my shortcuts, I'm pressing L, boom, 
you'll notice that now the background is peach and I can actually fill without having to paint that entire selection just by hitting command and delete. Boom, we got ourselves a peach dinosaur. <laughs> All right, now I'm not gonna be painting on this layer because say there's something uh, that I wanna change. So I wanna make sure that I can go to that layer, select it and paint down what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna make another layer. We're gonna name this one green because I like the green on the cheek of that parrotfish. And we're gonna throw it basically all across the dinosaur itself. So this is where the imagination comes in, where we're gonna just start adding patterns. Uh, sometimes they look really goofy, but at the same time you're like, oh, that's really cool. Remember, this is our boisterous dinosaur. So, oh my gosh, look at those colors just. <laughs> Nobody is gonna mess with Parasaurolophus. If I could travel back in time and become a dinosaur, you all know who it'd be. Now, I'm actually painting with a Wacom tablet, or Wacom, potato, potato. Either way, it's helping me, without having to steady the mouse, uh, to paint. I recommend, if you are an avid painter online, to use one of these tablets. They're absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh, look at this, neon blue. Shelby just commented, I've never seen a peach dinosaur before. <laughs> Uh, maybe they were. Um, I remember being in high school art and my watercolor was based on a giant uh, carnivorous theropod, which is one of our uh, dino dinosaurs like a T-Rex or Allosaurus, if you're familiar with them. And it had pink on its face and my teacher came right up to me and was like, you can't do that. And I looked at her and I said, well, why not? And she's like, they weren't pink. And I looked right at her and I said, how do you know? <laughs> we'll, we'll never know, except for those very rare fossil remains that we talked about earlier. But again, we're having fun here. We're making a really cool looking, just loud dinosaur right here. All right, we'll give it some lines here. Oh, but it could totally have changed these colors if it was during the mating season to attract a mate. Why not? Then they just call him in using that horn phone right there. All right, so we got this really cool looking stripe down the side. Let's get some of this purple in there. So again, I'm gonna create another layer. And what's neat is I can turn them off. Over here on the right side in my layers, I can uh, tap the eye and boom, that color is gone. That's what I was talking about earlier. So if something's not working out, I could just get rid of it. It's that easy. All right, purple. We're gonna go down underneath the neck with the purple. Ooh, so we're gonna make pretty much, there we go, the gular sack. Yeah, animals like the Simon Gibbons have a gular sack, and that is what they use to communicate through the rainforest to other Siamangs to let them know, hey, this is our home, stay out. So we're gonna make ours nice and vibrant because what the heck, why not, he's showing off. By the way, this would definitely be a male because we have been able to identify so far, it, it may not be confirmed, but there is sexual dimorphism in this species where the horn of the female is much smaller than the male. Red belly, I like it, Olivia. Okay, so let's get some of this bright neon pink. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put it down here. Now, when you're doing your layers, watch what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and do pink. That's the name of this layer. I'm going to paint the belly, but if the layer's above, say, the purple layer, it's gonna paint right over it we got a problem. So all you gotta do is just grab and drag your layer underneath and boom, look at that. My pink is underneath the purple and I don't have to worry about erasing any of it to make that look that way. Now, I know Olivia said red belly, so I'm gonna show you guys something real quick here. Oh, 
Oh, you want me to zoom in on the vi on the picture? Got it. Okay, there we go. We're gonna paint the belly this pink, but Olivia said red. Oops, my bad. Not really. I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. Because again, remember, Photoshop is used for photos, so there's a lot of ways to correct colors in Photoshop as well. Now, do we want this red belly to go all the way up? I think we should. We want a, a bright red belly. Okay, so again, it's pink. We wanted it red. I'm going to go back, rename my layer. And what I'm going to do is Command U. That brings up my hue and saturation tool. And what I can basically do is adjust that color. So up top, you have your hue, your saturation, and your lightness. Lightness just makes it basically almost to white and basically almost to black. So you can change it. You can make it darker and lighter. Saturation is going to draw out that color. So think of that as a sponge. And then up here, we have the hue. And what that's actually going to do is combine the color with what we already have. So I can sit here all day and go through it and get to red if I wanted to. You can see it's turning purple. There we go. It's back to blue. Or here's a fun little trick. Hit colorize. Okay, so our saturation is down. We want to add some of that color instead of soak it up. So I'm going to bring up the saturation to 50. I'm going to bring the lightness up a little bit, and I'm going to go to red. All right, so I'm going to bring down that lightness again. Oh, there we go. There's that red we were talking about. Awesome. Looks more like pink belly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to select that color now. You can easily select the color if you have your paintbrush selected. If you hit Alt or Option on Mac, tap it. You can see the ring for the color pops up. Boom, now I have that color selected as my foreground over here on the left. Uh, the reason why I want to do that is because, well, I had the previous color I was painting with. I want to use this one now. There we go. All right. So let's get a little bit down here, up around the neck. Boy, this dinosaur is looking good. It almost looks like he's ready for uh, Christmas. <laughs> he's got a, a purple scarf on. All right, maybe you want a little bit of red around the eye. There we go. And that horn, that horn has just got to stick out for our Parasaurolophus. So I'm thinking we do this orange. We're going to do a reverse parrotfish here. So again, I'm creating a layer. I'm going to rename it. And we're going to paint this giant colonimate horn orange. That's not, not as bright as I was expecting. So again, we can go into that control U and we can brighten it up by the saturation. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> this is starting to look like the uh, Lisa Frank dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley, I'm glad you like it. This is so much fun. And yes, Mary, this is a very fabulous dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! I think we need some of this chartreuse, if I'm not mistaken. This is our best friend Olivia's favorite color. You're all our best friends, by the way. Don't start fighting amongst each other. Okay, I'm not going to spell chartreuse. I'm just going to do yellow because I was never good at spelling bee. We were always busy doodling. Okay, so that yellow is a little bit around the fin. We're going to go right about here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is great. Okay, we're going to follow the arm scales now. This is kind of cool. So um, to answer Nicole's question about the feathers, I think Casey left something there. It depends on the dinosaur. Um, a lot of fossils have been found with dinosaurs that have feathers, but not all of them have. Uh, your Parasaurolophus here is part of the Hadrosaur family, I believe. Casey, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but these are more of your duck-billed dinosaurs. And as far as we know, they have not been able to find any feathers. Now, here's something really cool. Recently, they were able to find 
with an Edmontosaurus from Canada. The forelimbs of the Edmontosaurus, which was a duck-billed dinosaur, had a hoof. It was really cool. Thank you, Olivia. Okay, now that I have the spelling of chartreuse, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past her to help me spell her favorite color correctly. Okay. Boy, this dinosaur is looking fabulous. Yes, it totally does look like something from Avatar. And who's to say that dinosaurs couldn't have produced bioluminescence? Oh, how cool would that be? You turn the lights out, and all of a sudden you have these glowing dinosaurs. Oh, that would be fabulous. Big fan of Avatar, guys. Okay, let's add some stripes down by the legs here. And we're going to get creative. Uh, you know, we're so used to the zebra stripes by the legs. If you are familiar with the elusive okapi, a beautiful, beautiful animal found from the Congo of Africa. They have basically the head of a giraffe and the body of a horse with the butt and legs of a zebra. It is just one of the coolest looking animals that exist today. So again, if anybody says that a dinosaur can't look like this, show me proof. Tell me they don't look like this. Show me proof. <laughs> All right, we have a little bit of curve because of the thigh muscle. All right. Boy, this time, oh, this dinosaur needs to show up at a party. Yeah, they're going to be not only creating a ground tremor, but they are going to be just making that dance floor. Hop it. Hopping crazy busy. All right, look at this. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is incredible. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Shelby just brought up a really good point. A platypus can glow, so why not dinosaurs? Why not? I mean, look at this beautiful parrotfish. It exists today. All right, now we're going to go up to that giant gaping maw of the Parasaurolophus. I'm going to name that ivory because the mouth of the parrotfish is a bit of an ivory color. Don't worry. Don't worry. He needs some lip gloss to just pop those lips. Make them just say everything. All right. We can go back down here to the blue. Right, let's give them some of the, the blue lips, almost like they had a raspberry bush for dinner. Oh, boy, look at that. Yeah, this is definitely looking more like Avatar. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> You know what, let's add some really cool stripes down here along the side. No, big spots. Let's do spots. Kind of blend them in right there. Oh, this dinosaur is looking amazing! Ooh, you know what, let's do the scales. Throw them in there too. All of you are so creative. This is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Maybe we're looking at the dinosaur at night. Why not? Just imagine yourself. Rewind time in your head. Go back to that beautiful orchid forest. And the night draws near. And you start hearing the calls of the dinosaurs. The horn of the Parasaurolophus. Maybe it's mating season. So it's a little bit more humid from all the dino love going on. Wink, wink. <laughs> but it's pretty warm out. The sound is having a hard time carrying. You'll actually hear uh, insects start to quiet down, but then the night insects start coming out like our crickets. And then all of a sudden, the call of the Parasaurolophus, that horn that's honking. Yeah. Oh boy. And since it's cooling down, the call can be heard for miles away. Maybe a bachelor male. It's his first year. 
He's on the job. He watched his old man as he became the, the patriarch of the herd. Or if mom was the one leading the herd, she's making sure that she's choosing the right males. And all of a sudden, the dinosaurs that were blending in during the day, the Parasaurolophus that was blending in during the day, hiding away from predators like the T-Rex, just disappeared. How awesome would that be? So we've got these bioluminescent stripes. This dinosaur can be seen in the middle of the night. Awesome. Oh, that's good to hear. Thank you, Ashley. Just want to always make sure you guys can hear me. I'm, I'm sure most of you don't have that problem when I'm sitting directly next to you and we're having a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Ooh, here's a cool thought too. Maybe this dinosaur glows like this because of Parasaurolophus's vision. Because we know that with birds, they can see in different wavelengths of light. You got it. So anybody who's just joining us, uh, we've gotten very creative with our Dinovember Dinosaur Choice Parasaurolophus for tomorrow. You guys will be able to see this posted on our Instagram. Uh, we've gotten really creative, just as I would with creating these dinosaurs for Dinovember with Casey. And we reached out to everybody and we decided, you know what, we're going to see what you guys come up with uh, when it comes to the color scheme and pattern and all that good stuff. So uh, the audio is cutting out. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully it bounces back. Let me see if I can get some more here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, hopefully that helped out a little bit. This thing is looking amazing, you guys. <laughs> Ashley, you can come back anytime and recharge with our positive energy. Anytime, anytime. Okay, so look what I was accidentally doing. Uh, I was painting the ivory of its bill with that blue that we were talking about earlier. My bad. So I can either leave it there or, oh, hold on, raptor attack, guys. Take cover. Okay. Luckily, it just ate the cat and it didn't get anybody else. Okay, we're safe. <laughs> All right. So back to what I was saying. You'll notice that I accidentally put two colors on one layer. That is perfectly fine. Uh, what I can do is either erase out a color that I don't want on that layer because I have more of another color or vice versa. It's your choice. But because we were on such a roll, we were in the moment when it came to dinosaur breeding. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So we'll just make that uh, blue as well. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Again, for anybody who's just joined us, we're painting our dinosaur right now for tomorrow's Dinovember. Uh, we talked a little bit about selecting the image itself, where to paint the different layers on Photoshop in a layer of the Parasaurolophus itself. We came up with a creative color scheme for the dinosaur uh, using ideas like where they may have come from, uh, breeding habits, all sorts of fun stuff. So let's get back to painting. These toenails, let's make them more like a natural tone uh, because we don't often see a whole lot of keratin changing color uh, except for during breeding seasons. Uh, like pelicans. Pelicans are pretty cool because during their mating season, the males will grow this gigantic horn on their bill. Of course, it's not the size of their head, but big enough to show off to the ladies. Yeah, and those will have these vibrant colors on them, oranges and reds. Uh, we find that in the natural world, oranges and reds are colors that your eyes are naturally drawn to. Again, they're either to make you stick out like a sore thumb to warn things that you are dangerous or to attract a mate. So we're going to get that hoof up front. Um, fossil records show that, again, these duck-billed dinosaurs have more of a, a hoof on the front, but that's only from one specimen as well. Are we doing these every day of the month? Uh, 
we could totally do one every month. Yeah, we're so down. <laughs> uh, don't forget, guys, speaking of this month, uh, Dinovember, this is what we're here for. You can enter to win a 3D printed T-Rex skull. Um, Casey picked up a 3D... Yes, toe beans, Olivia. Don't get me started. Casey picked up a 3D printer, and we have had the most fun with it, and we were able to create a T-Rex skull. Let's see. Nah, okay. Uh, you guys can find that on our Instagram, but all you got to do is follow our Instagram, uh, tag somebody in the comments. The more you tag each other, the more chances you'll have of winning. And then, of course, at the very end, we will draw a name, and we're going to reach you uh, via message, and we will send out that dinosaur skull to you. It's decent-sized. I would say it's about the size of a football. Yeah, it's a big skull. Uh, and for those collectors out there, like myself, my wife, and Casey, uh, Justin, I know he collects these things as well, biofacts, uh, you will find... Uh, one of these potentially in your home. Of course, 3D printed, not the real deal. Uh, the real deal would cost you several millions of dollars just as a replica, and to even find a T-Rex skull, I would probably have a heart attack and die because that's my dream one day. Okay, so we've got the toe beans painted. We've got the stripes, the spots. Oh, he is just flashy, and he is ready to call on the ladies. Let's get a little bit of the tongue and the inside of the mouth painted real quick and the nostrils. So, yes, die Novembers. That's plural for how many months we're going to do this for many, 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 many months to come. Okay, so I've got a new layer. Uh, we're going to go and do the mouth. Paint that up real quick. And then, I don't know you guys, but we could take a quick break. I know we're having so much fun. Uh, but during that break, stick around. What I plan on doing is showing you guys what we do eventually do with the dinosaur itself and that is the realistic side of things all right there's that pink tongue not saying that this isn't realistic i'm not bashing on anybody at all our imaginations can go wild and now it looks like it ate a schnozberry <laughs> Ultra marine blue tongue. How about we do an ultramarine inside of the mouth? Yeah, like a blue tongue skink. That would be cool. I know that their tongue is blue, and I just totally contradicted myself, but um, there are animals out there with just vibrant colored mouths. I know that's on the pink layer there, but there we go. Look at that. Open its mouth. Maybe a predator comes up on them while they're mating and it turns around and just starts bugling that blue mouth is going to stick out and it's going to scare the living daylights out of anything that decides to interrupt our parasaur lophus. so i think we have a really good looking dinosaur here my friends well done <laughs> Make it red. Make it blue. I can actually do that real quick. But we're going to go ahead and wrap this up and just take a quick break. And I'm going to discuss with you guys those real paintings that I was showing you. I know it's been almost an hour. This is legit. We've been having so much fun. Time has been flying by. Uh, thank you guys for joining us again. If you're just joining us, uh, we were just talking about color schemes and how we paint, selecting the uh, layer itself to do this. Um, we've come up with a really cool looking Parasaurolophus, my favorite dinosaur in the whole world. And yeah, this, I think we should do this more often. What do you all think? I'm going to give it a chartreuse eyeball. Why not? Lisa Frank would be so proud. All we have to do is run it down to her in Tucson. <laughs> oh, he looks amazing. Okay, we need a shadow real quick. This can make that 3D effect. So what I'm going to do is just replicate my layer, bring it down to the bottom because I want it in the back. I don't want it to be in front of our beautiful Parasaurolophus. I'm going to change the hue all the way to black. Now, you're not going to see that because it's behind all the colors, but here I'm going to shrink it down. There's the shadow. 
Bing bada boom. So the light's coming from the front. Shadows are something I'm still working on. Let's fade it a little bit, going down to 60% opacity. And because the ground doesn't have sharp edges, unless you're in a building, which would be great to have this dinosaur in, I'm going to Gaussian Blur. And how I did that was went into the Filter section. The tab here went all the way down to Blur, Gaussian Blur, 6 pixels. And if you look at the shadow down here, it looks more natural. There we go. So you all have probably seen our painted dinosaurs on our Instagram. Boom. A pair of Parasaurolophus, a pair of Parasaurolophus, you got it. Uh, we can definitely <laughs> put more in here. This is just absolutely fantastic. Okay, let me take a quick breather. I'll still be here. Um, but at this point, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the comments. This has been just absolutely fantastic oh my goodness i am sweating what is up with this weather by the way i guess i'm in that dark forest of the cretaceous where these parasaurolophus are finding love okay so hopefully everyone's gotten a, a look at our amazing well created parasaurolophus uh we're gonna go ahead and switch gears and show you from the line art to the painting that I've done for our up and coming, I know you, some of you have heard this, uh, Paleo Trekkers Field Guide to Mesozoic Fauna. Uh, it turns out it's taking a lot more time for us to create, but if we can spend more time on the details and make it look amazing for you and for us, we totally will. So with that, I'm gonna bring up the Parasaurolophus. Uh, I painted this one several, oof, I'd say about a year or so ago. And this is what the field guide page is going to look like. You can see we have all the information we can that's not going to be too overwhelming for somebody who's reading this book for the first time. But it's basically the same setup. We have the background. We have the name of the dinosaur. Uh, Parasaurolophus means near crested lizard. We have the temporal range, its diet, its weight, all that cool stuff. And even the paleontologist who founded it and named it, which is really cool. So everything that we just did is very similar to what I do on a regular basis after Casey is done painting. So here we have the lines. The final product is just absolutely incredible. Um, let's see, all the way up here. It's going to take it a second. This is what it'll end up looking like. Now. That is not just throwing paint on. Uh, this is not only just finding the three or four colors. This is, like we mentioned earlier, finding out where the animal may have possibly lived with the flora that has been fossilized around it, um, whether it lived in herds, whether it was an herbivore. So I went through and was like, okay, what can we find here in North America? Uh, what habitat did this dinosaur live in? and stuff like that. So without these layers, uh, we basically have just a line art from Casey. Oh, hold on. That's what I start off with. So Casey gives me the line art. I'll clean it up. I will then go in and make a body selection and then layer upon layer. This is what will take me hours and hours of work. Um, I've sat down and painted some of these dinosaurs for 15 to 20 hours on end. And when they're done, you guys saw the finale there. It's just absolutely fantastic. It comes to life as Casey puts it. It's amazing. So I'm just going to go through quickly. Hopefully you guys can see it, the different layers it takes to complete that painting that I just did. So it's not just, oh wow, it's like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of work that goes into these, as you all well know as artists. So here's the base color. Casey's art is awesome. I can't do it without him. <laughs> we have some red highlights. Here's that gular sack that we were talking about earlier that we painted bright orange. Here's a brown layer, so a lighter back on the dinosaur, kind of like a zebra. A little bit of the white, so we're just highlighting certain areas, maybe certain patterns along the tail there. 
Uh, we've now given it leggings. Thank you so much, Susan. <laughs> Our, our Parasaur Lovis has leggings. Now you'll notice uh, that some of the edges are a little fuzzy. That's because I use different brushes. Uh, you can see here that that white layer is a brush that I use that's actually uh, pebbled skin, which is really cool. So the layers now, the black and the white, you can really see them defined. It's the belly now, and we can really see those defined scales with that color. Now we have some scales here that aren't painted, but that's in a different layer. So we're gonna keep going. A little bit of orange, there's that head crest that's getting bright again. Remember calling in the ladies. Uh, we have painted the mouth now at this point. There's a little bit of color there. The tongue is bright red. We'll see that with a lot of cattle, bovids. There's the beak. So I've even added a different brush into this, a hair brush. I have my own little pack of dinosaur brushes over here. This is bird feather brushes, Ben's dino brushes. I got tail feathers, I've got flight feathers, all the way down to the baby down, but then we also have the skin here as well, so the fine pebble. I even have highlights and shadows as a brush, uh, dino scales that's gonna paint with, and fibers like the beak here. So that, that went in, uh, leg scales and nails, so I'll paint those on a different layer as well. Here we have those leg scales, like an ostrich or an emu. We got a little bit of pink, so this dinosaur did have pink. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Welcome, my friend. We got pink around the eyes, so I have to keep in mind, too, that some of these areas might be less uh, pigmented because the dinosaurs are older. If we look at Asian elephants, they start to lose color as they get older. Uh, those scales that I was talking about earlier on the chest now have color. That's its own scale. Now let's get up to the eye. This is one of our creme de la cremes. Uh, Casey is so well known for his illustrations to have these gorgeous eyes because we pay attention to that soul that's in the dinosaurs. So there's the conjuncta uh, and the iris. Our conjuncta is white, our iris is whatever, minor green. Uh, we got a little bit of the pink for the ear, a little bit of the tear duct now. So we'll get closer. The pupil. I decided to go with horizontal because this is an herbivore, uh, much like we would find horses and Bighorn sheep, crazy fact, as they lower their heads, their eye actually rotates in their skull, so it's horizontal with the horizon. They keep their eye open for predators at all times. How cool is that? Now, these next four layers are going to make a world of difference. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the eye, but then I'm going to zoom out and show you the full body. It makes a world of difference. So real quick, here's all the colors that are down. But look what's going to happen when I add in all the highlights and shadows, because that's what nature does. Ready? We got our deep shadows. So I'm going into the wrinkles here. We've got our soft shadows. There's a little bit of the indentation of the mouth near the beak. Our highlights really just shows us this animal standing out in the field in the middle of the Cretaceous. And then my white highlights, like the eye shine on the eye. All right, are you guys ready for this? The full, yes, and goats. Goats do have those creepy eyes. Here's the full view of that Parasaur Lophus we saw earlier. Absolutely amazing. Look at that. We've got wrinkles down here. We've got folds with the musculature um, on the shoulder blade right here. It's just amazing. We have the neck muscles and tendons. This animal's strong, so we want to make sure it has a lot of meat, and we can show you guys that. The horn itself may have been polished off. Maybe it rubs it against a tree to make it nice and smooth. So how cool is that? All right, I'll show you guys the full body um, highlight and low light change. You got it. So the, a big difference. All right, ready? So take out all those highlights. Highlights are gone. Shadows are in. All right, I'm gonna take the shadows off. The neck disappears and the shadow of the leg where the body is um, shadowing the leg of the animal. World of difference, look at that. Look how it changes. There's shine because the scales, the elbow might be a little bit more polished because it's laying down, kind of like getting a callus on its uh, elbow. We see that in horses and camels as well. So this is the stuff that takes me several hours to paint, layer upon layer. I mean, you could look over here at the colors. We've got. Two, four, six, we have over 20 layers of paint 
that helped this dinosaur come to life. Oh, interrupting Brachiosaurus. <laughs> oh, how cool is this? So I hope you guys are super excited. Um, I am so excited to have shared this with you. I am so happy that you could join us. This was amazing. Um, let's do this every month. Uh, we'll maybe even have Casey sit down and you guys can draw a dinosaur with him. You can paint a dinosaur with me. So if you guys have any ideas, feel free and email us. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, our Facebook. You can contact us, even my phone number. Uh, we are here to hear you, help you out. As our core values go, create, inspire, and believe because we know you all have those creative bones in you. So where can we see our painted dino at the end of this? Instagram. Follow us on Instagram if you aren't already. You will see our dinosaur, Parasaurolophus, for Dinovember <laughs> tomorrow. And don't forget to enter to win that 3D printed T-Rex skull. The more you do it, the better chance you have. And with that, we're going to leave the information up for you uh, where you can contact us. I am just riding on a high of happiness. This was probably one of the most fun things that I've done with our artistic talent by including you. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this more often. So thank you guys so much again. Ben from Bros Brothers Productions. Uh, we are on Instagram, Facebook, we've got Etsy, The Forge. Yes, it is spelled F-O-U-R-G-E for the four brothers. Everything. Uh, come follow us. We even have a Discord channel if anybody wants to join us on that. Discord uh, allows a lot of people who are into the gaming world to join and share screens as well. Uh, thank you so much, Bear. That was awesome. Uh, Susan, Olivia, Shelby, Casey, Mary, uh, Vivian, Nick, <laughs> Alexandra, Ashley, anybody else? Kate or Katie, it's so good to see you back. <laughs> uh, it, this was absolutely fantastic. So look forward to this on our Instagram and our Facebook. We will keep you guys updated. Let's do this again. Uh, we'll keep the feed running, uh, answer any other questions. But I hope everybody has a dino, fantastic filled night. Uh, go out and find dinosaurs yourself. Read up on them. Uh, look forward to our field guide for the Mesozoic fauna in the future. Uh, and be creative. Get out there. Do it. Uh, we want to see what you do. Share it with us. Uh, we love you guys. We miss you tons. And uh, hopefully we can see your faces in person without masks. Again, thank you all for helping with that. Ah, oh, too much fun. Ah, oh, too much fun. That's a great question, Ashley. Uh, any good dino books that we can recommend? I actually have a library right here next to me of them. Uh, one of my favorites happens to be, let's see, this is an older book. Uh, it's Dinosaurs Past and Present. Uh, it's an illustrated book from the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. Um, we can definitely leave some information about these books online if anybody would like that including you Ashley um, fun thing about this book Sylvia Cherkis uh, happened to be the wife of Steve Cherkis whom our parents were friends with when they lived in California and he is an just amazing artist unfortunately he's no longer with us but he definitely is in memory and his sculptures 
So I recommend Dinosaurs Past and Present. It is a little dated, so the information in the book might be a little outdated. Uh, we're continually finding new fossils that help change the view of our, well, Earth's past and the amazing animals that you got to help paint today. <laughs> um, another one that I recommend, there is, let's see, A Field Guide to Dinosaurs, the Essential Handbook for Travelers in the Mesozoic. So very similar to the idea that we have. It's by Henry Guy and Luis V. Ray. Again, what we'll do is we'll actually post that stuff um, on our Instagram for everybody and Facebook. So if anybody is interested in these books that we have, I, I reference them all the time. They're fun to read um, and even show the kids and family. Why not? Uh, some of the dinosaurs in this field guide are actually brightly colored as well. So uh, Dinosaurs, a Global View that we just threw up there. Uh, Casey took a college course where he got a book that was everything and anything about the family tree of dinosaurs and I try and hold on to it but I just can't seem to hold on to it he loves that book way too much so oh <laughs> thank you Vivian <laughs> okay if you guys ever need a laugh let us know we'll definitely uh get back online with everybody and uh recharge you with that amazing laugh all right, any other questions before we close up? We'll go for about another three minutes-ish if anybody has any questions. If not, we'll enjoy the wonderful evening of brachiosaurs in our Cretaceous forest. Again, Fossil Box on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel. He basically has recreated the Jurassic Park ambiances. So we won't have the music in there. Uh, you'll hear mainly the environment with the Jurassic Park dinosaur sounds. Uh, it's quite fun. It helps me concentrate. I'm sure Shelby is done with those. I know she's done with the Jurassic Park soundtrack. I have each and every one of them. Uh, Olivia, what fish did we reference? Was the parrot fish? Yeah, let me bring it up for you again. Thank you, Ashley. We will see you next time for sure. <laughs> There's the parrotfish right there. Every day for sure, Shelby. Every day she has to listen to the Jurassic Park soundtrack. <laughs> it, it looks like Littlefoot. <laughs> Or are you talking about Littlefoot as a whole? That that has definitely been a uh, childhood inspiration. Longhorns never play with, or long necks. Three horns never play with long necks. Boy, I need to watch that movie again. I have it on DVD. That was, I believe, my second DVD I ever purchased. The first one was Brave Little Toaster. Yeah, always a kid at heart. <laughs> All right, we've got about a minute left. Is there anything else we can do for you, my friends? Again, follow us on Instagram for Dinovember. Follow us on Facebook. Don't forget to enter to win on Instagram. It's not on Facebook for that 3D printed T-Rex skull. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. I am looking forward to our next Facebook Live, whatever it may be, with you. Have a wonderful night. Thanks again from Bros Brothers Productions for joining us on Painting a Dino for Dino-vember. <laughs>